I'm going to show you how to configure your service broker in vRealize Automation. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavor. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Before we get started, there's a playlist up there. If you landed on this video randomly, you might want to go up to that playlist and start from the beginning. All right, as you'll recall, when we left off in the previous video, we had just created a new blueprint in Cloud Assembly. Let's go pick up where we left off in the lab environment. As you can see, we're right where we left off in Cloud Assembly, and what we just did was to create this blueprint here called My Blueprint. And you'll notice that it actually has one version, so version number one, and that that version has been released. Now what it means when we release a blueprint in Cloud Assembly is that that blueprint will be potentially accessible in Service Broker. Now I say potentially for reasons you'll find out in a few moments. Let's go over to vRealize Automation Service Broker. And in here, as you can see, my catalog is empty. And it's empty even though we just released a blueprint over in Cloud Assembly. Now, when I said release the blueprint in Cloud Assembly before, I said the all important word potentially. All those blueprints that you create in Cloud Assembly will not show up in Service Broker until you release them. So we have released that blueprint, which means we have the possibility, the potential of showing the blueprint here in Service Broker, but there's a bit more that we need to do on the Service Broker side. So let's take a look at the Content and Policies tab, where, as you can see, right now, under Content and Policies Content Sources, you can see that I do not have any content sources at all. And that is one of the main reasons why my catalog is empty in Service Broker. So let's create a new content source. The first thing that we're going to do is pick what type of content this source is. And as you can see, we have four different choices. And the reason why we have four different choices is Service Broker is not limited to simply um, exposing Cloud Assembly blueprints. Uh, Cloud Assembly, as you can see here, is one of the things that we can import from, but we can also import from AWS. AWS has something called a Cloud Formation template. And those Cloud Formation templates function um, similar to our Cloud Assembly blueprints. Additionally, we can choose to import workflows from vRealize Orchestrator. Now, if you're familiar in vRealize Automation 7 with the concept of a custom service, sometimes called XAS blueprints, um, those custom services exist here in vRealize Automation 8 uh, in the service broker. We can import a Orchestrator workflow to be run from the catalog in Service Broker, much like those custom services allowed us to do back in VRA7. And the other additional choice that we have here, which allows you to implement things like custom services once again, is new in vRealize Automation 8. In vRealize Automation 8, we have the ability to import into the Service Broker catalog ABX extensions, which uh, you'll know from previous videos, ABX extensions can either be written in in uh, node.js or can be written in Python. But for our purposes here, we're not going to worry about uh, three of these choices. Instead, we're going to choose Cloud Assembly Blueprints because the blueprints we created were created over in Cloud Assembly. The next thing I need to do is to pick a name for my um, content source. Now I'm going to choose the name My Cloud Assembly Blueprints. It'll probably help if I spell this correctly. Let's try that again, A-S-S-E-M-B-L-Y. There we go, that looks better. And notice here, I'm gonna say in the description field that um, this content source is for blueprints defined in Cloud Assembly, specifically in the VMW-Engineering project. For you see, every time you create one of these content sources, you're not importing all of the blueprints from Cloud Assembly. Rather, you're importing blueprints from a specific project in Cloud Assembly. 
If you had multiple projects in Cloud Assembly, you would need to have multiple content sources here in Service Broker. The next thing that we need to do is to specify the project. Well, you know the name of the project because I just typed it in the description. We're going to choose here the VMW-Engineering Project because that's the project over in Cloud Assembly where I created that blueprint. When I select VMW-Engineering or whichever project I may select, you'll notice that there's a validate button, which is going to go out to Cloud, cause Service Broker to go out to Cloud Assembly and test to see whether we can actually get a hold of anything. So let's see what happens when we try that. Let's click validate. And you'll notice it comes back with this message in green to indicate success. And furthermore, notice that it says that one, let me click that again, one item has been found. That's my one and only blueprint. So uh, again, the little message times out there, but we saw what we need to see, which is success. And we saw that one blueprint, the one blueprint that I released is now accessible through this content source. So having done that, what I need to do is click the Create and Import button. And as you can see, I now have a new content source called My Cloud Assembly Blueprints. And that content source has accessible through it one item, one Cloud Assembly Blueprint. However, if we go over to the Catalog tab, you'll notice that my catalog is still empty in Service Broker. That's because there's something else that we need to do over in the Content and Policies tab. In the Content and Policies tab, where we just define the content source, we also need to set up content sharing. Um, sharing in this context means making the, the items that we've imported available to someone or, uh, or a group of people, or specifically to a project. So let's choose Content and Policies, Content Sharing. And the first thing that we're going to do is pick the project uh, that contains the users that we want to empower. So I'll choose from the drop-down list our project, VMW-Engineering. And the next thing I'm going to do is click Add Items, because currently nothing's shared with them. So we'll click Add Items. And when we do so, you'll notice uh, several things. One, you get a list of all the things that are accessible um, through our various content sources. So here's our content source that we just created called My Cloud Assembly Blueprints. And if we had lots of different content sources with lots of different blueprints in them, we could use this filter to to filter to pick just the ones that we want. But before you go picking any of these, you need to pay attention to this drop down list here, which as you can see, gives you two choices. The two choices are labeled content sources and all content. Um, I, however, think of these as dynamic and static. And the reason why I think of them as dynamic versus static is if you choose content sources, then you are and in effect, it's going to specify criteria to say, um, as things change in my environment, here's the criteria for what I want shared with the users that I just picked with that project. On the other hand, if I choose all content, what you're doing is you are going to statically hard code, here are the blueprints or cloud formation templates or any of the items. These are the items that I want to share this is a hard-coded list, and I don't want it to change unless I come in and change it. Now I'm going to choose content sources to make this more dynamic. And notice when I choose content sources, again, I have the list of all my content sources down below, and I'll have a little expand button here, which let me go ahead and click on that, allows me to see all the items that are accessible through this particular content source. And we shouldn't be surprised here to find that the one and only thing that we have accessible here is this blueprint, specifically this Cloud Assembly blueprint called My Blueprint. So to empower the users in the VMW-Engineering project to have access to this blueprint, or for that matter, any of the blueprints that are accessible through this particular content source, I'm just going to check this checkbox. And again, because I chose the dynamic choice, from here on out, any additional blueprints that I create over in Cloud Assembly and release in the VMW-Engineering project, those are all automatically going to be shared with the users over here in Service Broker. So if we choose Save, now I've got both my content source and I've set up some content sharing. Uh, if I go to Content, I can see information about all the things that, all the items that had been imported. But crucially, if I go to Catalog, the catalog tab, let's see what we see there now. 
What we see there now is one and only one blueprint. Uh, again, the blueprint's the one called my blueprint. That's the one that we set up over in Cloud Assembly. And so we have succeeded in importing our blueprint into Service Broker. Join me in the next video where I'll show you how to use the Service Catalog in Service Broker.